Hello everyone. Today we're starting on a section called Modern Models of the Universe. So we've been looking at uh, various geocentric and heliocentric models of the universe and some of the physical laws describing them, and now we're finally getting onto what our current uh, understanding of the universe is. We have here a picture of a telescope in space that was launched uh, just a few decades ago, the Hubble Space Telescope. All right, so let's uh, start back in the past. Early models of the solar system were limited by the technology available. So we have a picture here of um, an early navigator at sea using a sextant to examine the skies. Ptolemy's instruments could not really measure uh, things very accurately compared to what we have now at least. So they could, not, they could not give very accurate data on the positions of the planets. They could give uh, good enough data to get a sort of model and be able to predict roughly where they'd be the next time you looked at the sky, but they're nowhere near as good as today's telescopes. So no telescope was powerful enough to detect, for example, stellar parallax until 1838. And so of course stellar parallax could never be detected until then. Now as technology improved, so did models of the universe. So we can see here an illustration of Galileo Galilei looking through a telescope. Brahe's observ observations, which were of course made in the various different observatories that he built, allowed Kepler to discover elliptical planetary orbits. So this of course was used with equipment that was state of the art at the late 16th and early 17th century. And so it uh, gave very accurate and very numerous uh, measurements that Kepler used to make his observations. And of course, as I mentioned before, Galileo's telescope allowed him to measure things like Jupiter's moons and Venus's phases which were not previously known, simply because no one could see them well enough. Now modern telescopes, telescopes of you know, the 21st century, make it possible to observe many amazing cosmic phenomena, which were completely unknown uh, 200 years ago. So uh, those include black holes, distant galaxies. I mean, for, for a long time we didn't even know that we were part of a galaxy. We didn't know what a galaxy was, but now we can observe you know, galaxies on the other side of the universe, or the other side of the observable universe at least. Uh, we can observe gravitational lensing around mysterious objects like dark matter, and we can observe uh, pulsars, which are, as far as we can tell, spinning neutron stars or something, probably. And of course exoplanets, one of the more interesting parts of astrophysics, which are of course planets orbiting around other stars. And supernovae as well, which are of course gigantic explosions caused by the collapse of stars. Uh, today, we understand that the Sun is at the center of our solar system, and not, in fact, at the center of the universe. So we have a model that's somewhat similar to a heliocentric model, except that although the, sun is, although the Earth is orbiting the Sun, the Sun is not anything particularly special in itself. This system is one of billions in the Milky Way galaxy. And of course, the Milky Way galaxy itself is not unique either. Uh, there are 100 billion other galaxies in the universe, at least. And that's just all that we can see. There may be some even further off from which the light hasn't yet reached us. So galaxies are grouped together in clusters, and those clusters are grouped together in superclusters. So you can see this thing just sort of keeps growing larger and larger. Many observations suggest that the universe began at an infinitely small, dense, and hot point, uh, which is hard to believe when you see the size of the universe today. And so, uh, th this uh, universe has been expanding and cooling ever since. And in fact, if we look out at the skies, we can still see the effects of the increasing uh, expanding and cooling of the universe. So there are still phenomena out there which we just can't explain with our current model. Uh, things like this include uh, dark matter, which is some sort of mysterious matter that we know is there because of gravitational lensing effects, but we can't actually see it or detect anything from it. There's the accelerating expansion of the universe. The universe is still expanding, but it keeps expanding faster and faster, and we have no idea why. Uh, there's the accretion jet disks. So sometimes when we get uh, huge amounts of gas accreting around a heavy star or black hole, so here we have a whole bunch of gas surrounding a black hole, we get these huge uh, jets of matter coming out from the sides, like this. Why does it do that? No one knows. It's pretty interesting though. Uh, 
uh, coronal heating is another sort of unexplained mystery of the universe. Uh, if we look at the corona of our sun, which is a, a amount of uh, very uh, sparse matter around our sun, it is in fact much hotter than the surface of the sun. <laughs> we don't know why this is either. It's something to do with uh, how the heat from the sun interacts with these particles or something. Uh, so the quest to understand and predict the universe uh, is in fact still one of the most exciting areas of modern science. Scientists have been studying the skies for, you know, thousands and thousands of years now. And we started off with, uh, in about 3000 BC, figuring out the Earth was round. In about uh, 300 BC, trying to put in a geocentric model of the Earth, and a thousand years later, figuring out that maybe it was the Sun in the middle of the universe, and now we've got, you know, the Sun which is just part of a galaxy, which is part of a cluster, and there are plenty of things in here that we don't know anything about yet. Right, so that's the end of the theory. I hope I've uh, got you interested in astrophysics. So we've uh, learned a bit about our models of the universe today and some of the explained and unexplained phenomena in it. Let's go on to some questions. Question 16. What technological device allowed astronomy to progress beyond the ideas of the ancients? That is, uh, people like the ancient Greeks. So we have a few options here. Let's go through them. The magnifying glass. This is a, uh, a utility of uh, lenses, which of course would be helpful, except if you're looking at the sky, a magnifying glass won't really help because the distances involved are wrong. So it's not magnifying glasses. Microscopes, another use of lenses. These uh, have incredible magnifications compared to magnifying glasses. And so we can see things like cells a hundred times bigger than uh, what their real size is. But once again, because the focal length of the lenses is wrong, we can't really use it to look at the stars. Is it the sundial then? Well, this allows us to observe the motion of one celestial body, the sun, but that's about it, I'm afraid. There aren't even any lenses involved. So our final option here is the telescope. Now the telescope is, has lenses in it that are uh, configured just right be able to look at distant objects as though they were close up. And so, as we can see, the telescope uh, is what allows us to look at, for example, stars and planets in more detail. And this is what allowed us to sort of realize uh, the details in the various different stars and planets and the way that they orbit the sun and not the Earth. Question 17. What prevented astronomers like Galileo from observing distant galaxies? We have a few options here, and all of them seem reasonably plausible. So let's go through them. Fear of the Inquisition. As we know, uh, the Inquisition preferred a geocentric model. Uh, and so heliocentric models, like the one that Galileo advocated, resulted in a bit of trouble. But even if uh, the observation of distant galaxies would have been punished by the Inquisition, we know that this wouldn't have stopped Galileo, because of course he published his heliocentric model of the universe. So it's not A. Is it then D? Nothing, and Galo Galileo did observe the distant galaxies. Well, this isn't true either. The first records of distant galaxies come from much, much later than Galileo, when uh, much more powerful equipment was built to observe them. Is it then C? Light from these galaxies had not yet reached Earth. Now this does seem fairly plausible. We know that some uh, objects in the universe are so far away that light from them will never reach us. So. At first, this might seem like the right idea, but in fact, cosmologically, 400 years, the distance between Galileo and our time, uh, is a very, very short amount of time indeed. Uh, it's virtually the blink of an eye, and so not much has really changed between the skies of the 16 and 1700s and the skies today. So our final option then is B, technological limitations. Very brief sort of answer, but in fact, we see that this is the right one. So very large and powerful telescopes are, intended, uh, are needed to observe distant galaxies. In fact, it's so difficult to observe distant galaxies that uh, our best views of the distant galaxies come from a telescope that was put into space, the Hubble Space Telescope. And that, of course, allows us to observe uh, the night sky without having to worry about the Earth's atmosphere getting in the way. Question 18. Briefly outline the current scientific understanding of the beginning of the universe. Now... Let's see how well you were paying attention. So, uh, I didn't mention the name of the theory, but you've probably already heard it before. 
It's the Big Bang Theory that states that the universe began as an infinitely small, hot and dense point. So not a point in space, because there was no space to begin with, um, but just sort of a singularity. And of course it has been expanding and cooling ever since. As you have noticed, the universe is no longer infinitely small and dense. Uh, as it cooled, the energy condensed into subatomic particles, which then condensed into atoms and things like hydrogen and helium, and then gravity was able to pull those together to form stars. Uh, we're now in the second or third generation of stars, so uh, from the perspective of a stellar lifetime, uh, we're not actually all that far away from the beginning of the universe. Uh, stellar lifetimes are, of course, much longer than ours, being on the order of about 5 billion years. Question 19. Name at least two astronomical phenomena which our current understanding of the universe cannot explain. So I had a few of these right near the end of the presentation. So at least two means that we can list more, and so I'm going to list about four, I think, just to make sure that my answers sort of cross over with yours. So we have dark matter. We know it's out there. We can't see it, so we call it dark, and we don't really know what it is. Uh, the accelerating expansion of the universe. So something is causing the, acceler the expansion of the universe to, to speed up. We don't know what it is. Uh, some people call the energy that's causing the universe to speed up dark energy. Once again, dark because we don't see it. We don't know what it is. Uh, another one is jets of matter expelled from accretion disks, which of course I drew that lovely diagram of. Uh, we don't know why it does that, but we know it's interesting. We know we want to find out. And uh, one more, the extremely high temperature of the solar corona. We don't know why it gets hotter than the surface of the sun. There's certainly some unexplained mechanism out there that allows it to do that. Finally, question 20. Is our universe geocentric or heliocentric? Provide evidence for your answer. Now, it's probably a good idea to pause the video and write down an answer here. So. The uh, correct answer is, in fact, neither of these. Our universe is neither geocentric, with Earth at the center, or heliocentric, with the Sun at the center of the universe. Uh, modern powerful telescopes allow us to see that our Sun is just one of millions and billions of stars. There's not much really to separate our Sun from uh, any of the others, aside from the fact that we're orbiting around it. Um, and of course, <laughs> Our galaxy is just one of many galaxies, and our galactic cluster is just one of many galactic clusters, and our local supercluster is just one of, and so on. You get the idea. So our universe does not seem to be centered on anything in particular. It's not Milky Way centric. It's not geocentric or heliocentric. It's not even supercluster centric. As far as we can tell, the universe doesn't even really have a center. However, if we were only talking about our own solar system, then uh, of course, our solar system is heliocentric. <laughs> All right, well, that uh, concludes the questions. And in fact, it concludes the lesson as well. So in this lesson, we've learned about uh, our current understanding of the universe, uh, how it began, the things that we do understand and the things that we don't, and a little about how it differs from uh, older versions of the understanding of the universe. <laughs>